Hey everybody, this is Joe slash Foozle CC. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how you can procedurally generate some interesting dungeon layouts, room layouts, maybe world maps uh, inside of your video game using something called Wave Function Collapse. So what is Wave Function Collapse? Well, it's an algorithm and it's a pretty successful algorithm that has been used in a number of titles such as Townscaper, probably most famously. And in Townscaper, the developer uses it combined with other procedural generation techniques like marching cubes, etc., to create this really almost magical, uh, engaging uh, game. I think he calls it a toy, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And the user can actually go through and build and craft these cute little towns. And it's almost like magic that these structures appear and it kind of solves uh, what this thing should look like um, based off the inputs that have been provided. We're not gonna get anywhere close to Townscaper in this video, but we are gonna create a working implementation of Wave Function Collapse inside of Construct 3, leveraging an existing JavaScript library that is already you know, optimized in a successful way that you can do it inside of JavaScript um, based off the original famous wave function collapse algorithm. So in our game, we want to take a simple tile map that, and we're gonna, I'll show you that tile map in a second. And, and we're gonna provide it with rules about how these things can kind of go next to each other. Like, hey, this can go to the left of this and on top of this, but not to the right of that. And we're gonna sh shove all this into the wave function collapse algorithm and out of it, magically, it's gonna create levels that kind of look like dungeon maps, right? And uh, all of a sudden you can start to visualize how I can overlay this with real art and make something kind of really cool. So that's that's the goal of the video. Um, we're gonna implement it inside of Construct 3. We're gonna show you how you can take that JavaScript library, put it inside of the engine, tie it to our event sheet, and produce a working wave function collapse inside the engine, and also make it interactable so that I can even destroy it and let it regenerate itself, which would be kind of cool. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to link to the original like GitHub repository of the, the wave function collapse algorithm. And we're actually going to use this tile set here. Uh, so you'll see this in inside of Construct 3. And this has been implemented in multiple languages. And the one that we're going to go ahead and uh, focus on, though, is this implementation by Ling Dong for JavaScript. Let me scroll up here. And he's actually called this NDWFC. Uh, which basically means like n dimensions. So you can do this in 2D or 3D. We're going to do the 2D implementation. And inside of this uh, repo, you can go ahead and click on here, click download zip, and you can grab these two JS files, which is what we're going to use. Um, you can look at some of this code for example use cases and kind of go through his tutorial of how to get the basics going. But I've kind of already done that in Construct 3. I'll have these links in the description below. All right, let's go into Construct. This is my amazing project file. It is a red layout. Uh, so let's go to our layer. Um, it's pretty simple. I don't have many objects in here. I've got one, one, one layer here. I've set the background color to red so we can see what's going on as we interact with this thing. And it's got one object on it. It's an empty tile map. All right, so let's take a look at this tile map. This tile map is actually the input that is one of the, one of the key inputs to the wave function collapse, which is what are my tiles that I'm going to use to uh, build this thing? And you can see here, I think I've got a total of 28 uh, tiles, so four by seven grid. And what I've done here is I've taken that tile map that you saw actually in the original wave function collapse algorithm, and I've put it into a tile map here. And they're kind of each like little three by three things, right? So you can think of this as like white, black, black, white, black, black, white, white, white. And white is gonna be our empty space, black's gonna be our filled space. And I've got all the different, you know, kind of simple things that are actually going to build up to make an interesting uh, layout. So you've got corners, you've got hallways, you've got some doors, you know, like, like these type of intersections, walls, etc. And we're going to provide some rules that we'll touch on in a second. And ultimately, we're going to be able to build, oh, you saw that, <laughs> ultimately, we're going to be able to build um, something that creates this room layout automatically, which is awesome. Uh, I mean, come on, this is this is already looking pretty cool. You've got different rooms and hallways and, you know, you can scale this up and down, but you can imagine all of a sudden you've got this dungeon layout and I've got this thing expanding every five seconds. So I can kind of like visualize it getting bigger. Um, but I've also, the reason I kept it at five seconds is so that I could interact with this thing. And I can show you is I'm actually destroying these tiles. And when it regenerates, 
oh, it made it actually a little bit different. That's because I wanted to put this use case in here to show how you can actually destroy and refill in or even seed your tile map so that it constrains it a little bit. So maybe you have a room that you like for sure want to set that these are my walls and you can create some obstacles in the middle or whatever, but these walls, they got to be here. Well, this shows, you know, this implementation is going to show you how you can do that. And then, you know, similar to here, it's going to, you know, refill in the empty areas. Okay. So this is what we're building. It's going to be cool. Okay. So coming on back here that those two JavaScript files that we downloaded, right? The first thing is you got to get that inside of your construct project. And so you can come in here after you download it, you can import it, right? And drag them in. And I've got them both here. So this is the NDWF uh, C and this is the tools. And we're going to touch, touch on this. The tools is, is super important because it's going to make our life really easy. And I'll touch on that at a super high level, but this is the actual core algorithm. This is what's actually doing the wave function collapse. There's a few methods in here that are key. Um, the, the ones that you're going to see me reference quite a bit is this expand. I'm not going to touch on how this works, but I'm going to like, that's expanding and setting the size of how big this thing is. And then this step, and this step is what you're going to kind of keep doing and solving each little permutation. And it is also call, calling this thing called propagate, uh, which these things all kind of work together to kind of continuously expand the area that it needs to fill while satisfying all the rules that we're going to provide to it. I have made a couple modifications to the script that I want to point out. I've added two methods. One is destroy tile, um, which because I want to be able to interact with this. So when I click on it, it destroys it. And the other is this update current tiles because I want to be able to take a snapshot of all the different current tiles um, in the wave and save that so that I can actually use that as a seed when I'm regenerating. So those are the two things I've added. And then lastly, I had to slightly tweak the way that this exports um, so that it works well with Construct 3. So this is what it was in the script. This is you know how I had to set it up so that it actually works. So you've got these, you've got these two JavaScript files. I'm not going to touch a ton on JavaScript in this video. If you need some primers on JavaScript inside of Construct 3, start for sure with the examples. Just come over to Browse Examples, click on Scripting, and just start going through some of these things. And you'll see how this typically works and how you can interact with event sheets and scripts and how you can use the API. Um, I've started to love using it uh, inside of Construct 3. I think it's a great uh, addition. This import for events is kind of important. You have to set it purpose for import for events. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm importing these three things, WFC, which is for this, this export. And then I'm importing the WFC tool 2D. There is a 3D in here, but we're not going to touch on that. You probably, you know, there's a way to do it in N dimension, right? The third dimension. Um, but we're going to focus on 2D. So I'm exporting this, this 2D. And then also this globals, where I'm just keeping the current tiles array and this thing called WFC input. We're going to touch on that. Okay, so these are my scripts, but let's go over to the event sheet. The event sheet, I've got some globals that's going to let me keep track of my current size of like how big my uh, wave function collapse is in terms of tile size, and then some UIDs, and that's really about it. And what I'm basically going to do on each of these things is I'm, I have a set of functions where these functions are kind of like the key steps, and I made them functions because some of them get reused between the regen and the initialization when I do the on started layout. So we're going to touch on these at a super high level and you guys can also uh, go through it on your own time, but there's kind of some key steps. So on started layout, we're going to do a handful of things. We're going to set the UIDs to use as a reference in our script for the tile map that's on the layout, as well as this input UID for this JSON object. I'm not going to touch on it much, but inside of this event sheet code, you'll see how I, it, Put in the hooks that if you wanted to save like the input of your wave function collapse to your local storage, you can so that you can actually on sort of layout, pull from local storage, not need to regenerate and use that if it's not if it's not changing. So that's what these kind of two triggers are. So I'm going to ignore these uh, for the purpose of this video. And what we're going to do is the first key thing is we're going to do this generate input. All right, so let's go down to generate input. This is kind of a, uh, a key. Um, uh, section. So in here is where we're actually going to set the rules of our tiles. Now, if I didn't use this tool to create my rules, 
what I would have to do is I'd have to go through and create these type of things manually. Like tile zero can be to the right of itself on the X dimension and on top of itself and below itself on the Y dimension. I'd have to permutate all these different things out for every tile that I have. And I have 28 tiles and it would, it would be super painful. So we don't want to do that. We're going to use this tool. In this tool, what we can do is we can actually describe it with a string. So for instance, this tile is zeros for empty and W for wall. And this is how you describe it. Now, the way that you would input this is, you know, it's got to have, you, you put in zero WW, you hit enter zero WW, and you can describe your tiles pretty quickly. Um, I've got this transforms object, which is a key thing to point out is that the algorithm for this uh, JavaScript library, what it will do is if you don't provide this transforms like empty, it will attempt to rotate that tile to every dimension and then also even flip it if you want to and it will add those tiles automatically and it's supposed to be a time saver but it also just kind of gets confusing because um, at the end i'm going to map this to a tile map position and i just permutated it all out so i don't want it to do any of that so i'm saying hey don't do any transforms i'm explicitly stating this if you don't explicitly state it it'll try to do all that and then i have this weight and this is useful in case i want to make something a little bit heavier for instance, are more probable to show up. In in this case, the only one that I have that's not a one is my empty tile. I made it a seven because I kind of want this feeling of rooms to emerge or larger spaces to emerge. So that's why I did this. You can do what you want in your game. So I do this for 10 tiles and this can be any string. It can be numbers, it can be um, symbols, etc. And it's gonna do is it's gonna check the edge cases. So for instance, if I wanted to put this is zero, zero, zero next to this tile, like I couldn't because this is W zero W and this is zero, 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 and they're not the same. However, if I wanted to put um, this tile next to this tile, I could because this is WWW and this is WWW. And so it checks every, you know, top and bottom, left and right, and it removes all the duplicates and it creates all those rules for you. And what it does is it stores it inside of, uh, this object, let me, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So this is where I create all these rules and this is an important step. So then I go on and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this initialize from tool. So this part is where I then take all those rules that I've provided and I say, hey tool, generate my WFC input. So I do that and then I can pass that ultimately into this global this WFC equals new WFC that input. And it takes all that information and it creates a new wave function collapse. Now I skipped over a couple of things. This seed input is where if you want to predefine certain things like, hey, these walls must exist, this is where you can do that. So I'm explicitly stating here which tiles need to be what. You might have an algorithm that does this for you. You might have many different possible inputs based off level, but this is what's doing that. I'm saying, hey, at these different tile positions, it needs to be, you know, 10, which is empty for me because I want to maybe have where the player starts in the middle of the room always be empty. All right, so that's that's how you can initialize it with a seed. Okay, so now I've created this new wave function collapse. That's the first step. The next step is to do this expand. So it doesn't know how big am I supposed to be. I've got all my rules, I've got my tiles, I've got my weights. What, what am I supposed to, how big, how big do I need to be? And in here is where I, I set that. So I'm going to ultimately call this wfc.expand and I need to provide it its sizes. In this case, I'm doing a couple of things here. I'm actually passing in the expand size and I'm doing a check here where basically say, hey, current size is equal to current size plus expand size. And I'm capping it by the max size. And I just have all these set up as global variables to keep track of this. And max size for me is like, hey, my viewport or my layout's only going to be this big. So I never want it to be bigger than this. So go until you get to this size and then never get any bigger and then use that for, hey, this is how big you need to be, right? And when I, when I put in like, say that's it's two or five, what this really is is minus five to five in both dimensions, right? It's not like zero to five. It's, so it's really gonna be 10 wide or 11 wide. Um, you get the idea. So that's what expand is, but ultimately it's saying, hey, this is how big I am. Remember the project file is gonna be available in the link down below so you can actually go through it at your own pace and make sure you understand everything. So this expand is like saying, hey, now this is how big I am, right? 
Now, the next thing we need to do is say step. And this is a part of basically the wave function uh, algorithm where it's going to try to step through and start filling in all the unknown information. And as it does that, it has to propagate and check its neighbors and make sure that all the rules are being constrained. And the way that I do that inside of construct three is I'm calling that method inside of this while loop. So basically I'm saying, hey, until I'm filled up, keep going. Um, I also have this check though that there is conditions where if you create rules that can't collapse, it won't solve. So I wanna have a, a stop gap and I just arbitrarily said, if I is less than the H times the W times five, give up. <laughs> um, otherwise, when you are done, say that I'm filled and then kick out and move on to the next step, which is going to be draw it, right? So I've got all the data now. So I've got the data, it's gone through the loop, it's solved everything. And I call this um, up here, this update tile map. And all I'm doing here is I'm ultimately gonna use the API of the tile map to fill in all the information. I have this look up here, which looks kind of silly. And the reason I have this here is that in case you have a tile map where it's like, hey, I really want my fifth tile to represent tile eight, you can do all the mapping here. There might be some other use cases where it makes sense to have this abstracted. Um, so that's why this is here. If you wanna see what the result of this data looks like, uh, if I go ahead and I run this and I hit F12, I'm currently logging it, you can see this is kind of what the result is. So I've got, hey, these are all my tile positions and this is what the tile number is. So I can take this and I can say, go through and loop through all of it and fill in the tile map with this tile number and visualize it. And that's what it's doing here. So we've got our wave function collapse working, which is awesome. By the way, if you enjoy this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, the, uh, the next thing we, I wanted to do, though, was I wanted to be able to regenerate and destroy it. So I do have a couple things here where I'm saying, hey, if I click on this, go ahead and destroy it and remove it. Um, that's that destroy tile method that I added uh, here. Um, and then I want to regenerate it every five seconds. So I just have a simple timer on the tile map that says every five seconds on regen, I'm going to actually do a couple things. I'm going to do a slightly tweaked initialization called WFC initialized regen. And then I kind of do the same steps. So let's look at that slightly tweaked one. What I do in this is I want to store a snapshot of my current wave because I'm going to use that as a seed for the new um, wave function collapse. So I call this method called update current tiles, which was the second one I added here. And it's going to store it in this globals uh, value so that we can keep track of it. And ultimately, I can then use uh, that um, so that I can push into my WFC.input that wave. I'm going to reset it back to empty uh, and then I'm going to say, OK, hey, I'm still using that same input with all the same rules that we did in the beginning. Right. But the wave has changed. I'm going to say, hey, empty this out, take all my current tiles. And, you know, so th the ones I've destroyed and everything, they're all gone now. Right. So I'm just going to put all that in as my seed inside that wave. And then I'm going to create the WFC. And then when I do my expand and my steps, it's only going to be filling in those gaps that I've destroyed. So with that, you hit play. We've got our tile map. I can destroy things, regenerate it. And pretty quickly though, you can get the idea of how I might actually incorporate some real art into this. So one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is just as an example, and this is you know like super early on, I'm thinking, hey, what about inside my Smash game, which I might, might finish one day, what if I create 3D uh, objects that represent each of those tiles, right? I can create corners and walls and doors and everything else, right? And then inside of my game, I can run this algorithm and I haven't, I put the algorithm in here, but I don't have it actually placing it yet. So this is super early, but you know, inside of Smash maybe even, which maybe I'll finish one day, um, <laughs> I can come in here and I can create levels. And so I've just switched this over to a 3, 3D camera, which is why it looks all goofy. And this is all the old 2D art, but I'm experimenting with, hey, what if I put some 3D walls in here? Could I still make that look pretty good? And the answer might be yes. And it might be able to create some pretty interesting level layouts that maybe even um, can be interactable and my player can destroy or enemies can destroy. I, I, I don't know. I've got some ideas. All right, everybody. So that's our video for today. And I really appreciate you guys watching. I think this is uh, a really fun uh, algorithm to get to play with inside of our projects. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscribe. And with that said, everybody, uh, good luck in your game dev journey.